Welcome back to the rest of the story. I'm going to talk about something briefly that you guys never really hear much about. That is the cement silo here at Rockville. You guys can see the feed bunk up on it is pretty well shook. The silo has not been ran since 2014. It has, the last time it was filled was in 2013. The chances of it ever getting filled again are, well, whatever's less than none. Say it um, just doesn't work in our operation anymore. You say, I, when it comes to doing forage again, silage, say we're all under the consensus that the blue harvesters, if we go back to blowing any more silage up a tube, it's going to be the harvesters, not these cement silos. Inefficient. Um, can't say any of us are really crazy about having to climb up every week and change the silo door in it. I don't really know if you guys saw much of that on Ryan's earlier videos, but yeah, it's a really dirty job. Corn silage wasn't near as bad, but um, hay silage is, you get chaff all over you and you really just, there's nothing you can really do about it. And the harvester can hold more. This silo, what we usually end up doing with it is we'd fill it full of first crop, He's yelling down in Rockville. We'd uh, fill it full of first crop in June. And then what we would do is that'd be the last we'd fill it. And then in the fall, we'd go through and chop a bunch of corn silage and blow it up the tube to uh, top it off. Because we would usually, typically it would be empty by the time May and June came around. Say the Harvester, it's you know it's an in-barn feeding system. That usually held out where we were just right at needing to get concerned about feed that um, that we'd uh, get around to refilling it. Typically, we'd fill the blue harvester first, the 80-foot harvester, and then I believe this is a 60 or a 65. I almost want to say that this one's a 65, and then the cement one down at my place is a 60. But it's What's going to happen to it? It's going to get knocked over, almost certainly. Uh, the doors are shot in it, so it needs a bunch of doors. After the farm sale, even before that, I had no intentions of really ever using it again. Brittany actually, in the last year or year or two, Brittany actually used it the most out of all of us, or used it, ran it the most out of all of us, because typically she would go out and feed silage for me in the mornings while I was still milking. But it was a pretty interesting design as far as the feed bunk goes. I know it's an ill repair. I mean, really thinking hard about tearing this out. Thing is, I'm talking to Dad. We're kind of going back and forth if we want to put another... Once we get all these, uh, this all tore out, going through and putting in just a board fence to divide this slot and the next slot. But um, lately I've been kind of thinking about getting a bunch of those cement feed bunks and putting in a cement feed, uh, feed bunk along here. Either set it back up there as far or maybe more than likely probably yeah almost certainly uh, pulling it back towards us so it's about level with this gateway here because thinking down down the road here if we ever get into using a tmr or even just a feed wagon um, if we fill it out of the part out of the hay silo and then dump some shelled corn into it or however we end up doing it but um that would allow us to be able to drive a tractor down through this gate and fill up that inline bunk and even short term I just did that video on the grain feeder yeah, I know I'm chaos are down there playing
Ryan went through and he cut out the pasture. And now they're having a ball with their nice new cleaned up pasture. All the long tall brown grass or burnt up grass and weeds are knocked out. And looks like they're having a ball. Yeah, I'm gonna have a video coming up where I'm cleaning out that outer shed. It's, it needs to be cleaned out. But um, in the short term, I've got that grain feeder for the skid steer. Um, I would really consider putting in an inline bunk and then putting steers on this far side. And then that way going along with the skid steer and dumping grain in. So that way we would have to open up, open or shut any gates. It would just be run and done. Because you got to think not always short term, you got to think long term too. So you got to think about accessibility for a tractor and a TMR. But yeah, the lot's getting some grass and some weeds growing up in it. But in time here, we got things coming. You say it's, I hate to tear the bunk out right now until we have an idea about what we want to do. Because otherwise, you just get the bunk ripped out and it's a big open void right through here. And it is nice having this section in here for sorting calves out or going to load them. A lot of the, a lot of the fences around this lot are gonna need uh, some some attention here. So, yeah, that's just a little bit of background on the cement silo. I I can't really tell you as far as Grandpa putting it up or how long it's been here or anything like that. I'd have to ask Dad. Um, for me, I mean, I know more of the background on the harvesters than I do the cement silos. It's just one of those things where it's really just been here my whole life. You never really kind of, you never really ever thought about a time where where it was never around. It was just always here. So we got our money out of her. She lived out her purpose, but time to move on. Well, with that, take care, take it easy, keep in touch. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.